It is roughly 7 a.m. This has been going on since 6 o'clock this morning. The neighbor upstairs is having a mental meltdown. He has thrown a lamp off of the patio, shattered. Looks like a hat, cable cord, the box. He's kicked out two of the screens. He's kicked out two screens out of his window. And all the landlord, which her name is Heather Hill. Out, 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 out. That she was tired of his shit and to get back in his apartment and sit down. She did not call the police. She was even out there picking up the stuff that he was throwing out. She said that she's not gonna pick up anymore. Somebody else gonna have to pick it up. So I don't know who the somebody else is. Cause I'm not picking it up. And he's up there starting again. He calmed down for a minute and now he's back up there throwing things around. This is at 435 West Bay <coughs> At this point, I don't know if I should be concerned about my safety. Um, I am planning to move. In fact, she told me I had to move. And so this is being recorded and documented just in case, whatever. This is what the neighbor has done. He threw all of his stuff out the window. Now you know what so I'm back at my apartment waiting for the plumber to come and unhook the water heaters that I, I had him hook up because I'm not leaving my plumbing here. But as I approached the door, there's a bunch of rice in the front of my doorstep. So if anybody knows what that's supposed to mean, These people are crazy. <laughs> like, I had no idea that I was going to be surrounded by nut cases. And I do mean nut cases. Crazy people. But anyway, I'm waiting for my plumber to come. I got my things packed. I'll be moving tomorrow. This has been very, very interesting. Um... I did not bring the police with me this time, but I did bring my nigga beater. I got my nigga beater, and I got my Louisville slugger over there, just in case somebody want to jump out of character again. I'll tell you more about it. Peace. Hello, everyone. So. Here is the update as promised. Um, I decided to just go ahead because I just got in running some errands and stuff. And I decided to, to just sit down, get myself a little comfortable here on the couch and just do the video. I just decided not to do anything um, Fancy, you know what I'm saying? I'm just coming to you real right from my living room in Jamaica to give you an update on what has been going on with me since I've been here. Okay, <clears throat> so any of you that follow my other channel, you've heard me say a few times that I'm that I moved. Okay. So I made the final move. I've been moving to Jamaica since October. I made the final move uh, December 28th. I decided that I was gonna do Christmas with my family and then I was gonna start my new year here in Jamaica. Um, that's what I did. Um, I shipped some of my things, not all of my things, but I shipped some of my things before me 
um, December 23rd, I believe it was, two days before Christmas. Um, I literally just got the rest of my things this past Friday. Um, I had to wind up going to Kingston to pick up my things, of which I um, actually paid for them to be delivered to St. James. And still not sure why they or how they ended up in, in Kingston. But anyway, I finally got all of my things. Um, I did have my television delivered. Um, it was a very good television. <laughs> you heard the keyword was. It was a very good television. Um, and I wanted to bring it with me. I bubble wrapped it a lot. Um, I then carded the bubble wrap with cardboard and then stuck that inside of more cardboard and then I put like a bunch of cloth around it and by the time I got it, it was all busted up. Um, they tell you to write fragile and stuff like that, handle with care and stuff like that on the boxes. Nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody cares. So um, I, I am out of a television. Um, I have a television, but I'm out of the television. I paid to have my TV shipped here and got here shattered. But, um, hey, that's the material. I can just buy another TV, right? Um, eventually buy another TV. So the bugs are going to be gravitating to this light. You guys, bear with me for one second. Hopefully you don't see my, my goodies. I'm just going to spray them down. Because I keep my uh, doors open during the daytime because it's such a wonderful breeze. I am um, up in the hills. And so um, you get a beautiful breeze. But anyway, this is what's going on with me. But this is also maybe to alert people um, who are thinking about moving to Jamaica as well, okay? So I made my final move December 28th. When I got to my place of residence, I did not know that I did not have hot water, okay? Um, now, what I am learning is that that, that, that is a thing um, in Jamaica. You're, you're not gonna always be guaranteed hot water. Uh, depending on where you live, okay? Where I am now, I have hot water. Um, so anyway, I got to the place and I realized I didn't have any hot water. Uh, this is actually before I made the final move. Um, I reached out to the landlord to inquire about it because um, from my understanding, the rent that I was paying in Jamaica, what I was paying was too much, okay? I was paying a thousand US dollars a month for a two bedroom, two bathroom, very nice apartment, very nice apartment. But I didn't have any hot water. And so um, I reached out to the landlord. The landlord basically dismissed me, um, did not respond. And so I wind up having to go get two hot water heaters, one for my bathroom, um, for, for the shower, and then one for the kitchen because I uh, just prefer to wash my dishes in hot water. Um, that put a bad taste in my mind. It changed the energy. It changed the dynamic between her, because, between her and I because the landlord was, is a female. She was a female. It changed the dynamic because um, the way I feel, I was paying rent before I even moved here, okay? Before I even actually moved here, I was paying rent. And... I inquire about something and you just totally dismiss me. I was like, okay, we're, we're having issues. We, we, are we finna have some issues, I can tell. Um, I inquired again after I got the hot water heaters. I inquired again about um, the landlord at least having her plumber to install the hot water heaters for me. If she wasn't gonna provide me with hot water, 
I said, okay, I'll get the hot water heaters, but I'm thinking the least you can do is have your plumber install them. I said, I think I pay a decent amount of money here that I should have hot water, okay? I was basically shot down again, um, pretty much told that what I was paying was a discounted rate, which I know is a lie, okay? Um, it was a discounted rate. And if anybody was paying more than $1,000, I see why they moved because nobody should be paying more than a thousand US dollars a month and don't have no getting hot water, okay? So, um, it took me a moment um, to find a plumber because basically she uh, told me that um, she can't control the fact that I don't have hot water. There is a, um, um, hot water solar system on, 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 the, on the roof. And the sun is shining here in Jamaica every day, okay? Every day you can expect at least 80 something degrees, okay? Sun, the sun hits that rooftop uh, like it ain't nobody's business and still there was no hot water, okay? So basically, she told me she couldn't control it um, she has a plumber, but I would have to pay at my own expense. I'm going to fast forward a little bit because I was um, informed or I later, I later learned that um, she specifically requested tenants from overseas. And I believe she specifically requested tenants from overseas so that she can overcharge us. Okay. So, um... Anyway, um, that, that, get, that put a bad taste in my mouth. So I decided that I was not going to use her plumber. I was not going to give anybody that she was associated with any of my money, okay? So I found my own plumber, all right? So glad I did, very nice, very nice person. Um, excuse me, I'll just go down and eat some tuna fish. So, Fast forward to the end of January. I had the plumber come out and install the water heaters. The water heater under the sink um, he installed, it had a leak, a leak in it, he had to come back and fix it. Now prior to that, the first time he came out when he was doing the water heaters, he turned off the water. He turned off my water and he turned off the neighbor's water upstairs by accident okay so this is the first time i've ever had an encounter with the neighbor upstairs um because when i first started moving in i tried to introduce myself to him and he didn't he didn't you know he was like really short he didn't want to be bothered and and that's fine you know people some people are just not sociable people some people don't want to be bothered but i figure i would introduce myself since it, since it was literally only three of us in this little small apartment complex, of which I later found out she lived at as well. Um, I and my realtor were under, under the impression that she lived in the States. Um, so when I got there and found out she lived on the, prim the premises, that put a, another damper a little bit because I'm just, I don't know about you, but I'm not trying to live on the same premises as my landlord. I just don't know why. I don't know, I don't know. I mean, but then I thought about it, I was like, well, I mean, it really ain't a big deal, but anyway, it was just us three, okay? I was in one unit, landlord was in, in, in one unit with her spouse, whatever he is, and the other guy was upstairs, okay? So, um, the plumber cut his water off by accident. So, he comes down, this is the first time ever, me ever um, interacting with him, besides the first time when I was talking to her about the hot water, I asked her, did she have hot water? I was like, do you have hot water? And she literally, this is her response. She did like this. Now I don't know what the hell that means, okay? But if it meant anything to me, that means that she had hot water. I almost called her something. It's she had hot water, okay? So when the guy upstairs walked by, he was like, uh, she asked him, she said, do you have hot water? And he said, nope. And that was it. That was the response. He hung his clothes on the line and he went back upstairs. And so, anyway, that was 
even then there was not much, you know, conversation. I was like, I looked at him, I said, well, you have a good day, you know, you know. So anyway, he comes downstairs, he was like, hey, do you have water? And I was like, is your water not on? And he was like, no. He said, I went to wash my hands and there was no water. And I said, I think my plumber may have turned your water off by accident. So I go to my plumber, I say, hey, neighbor upstairs says um, that he doesn't have any water. Plumber explains to him, you know, I, I, I'm, I switched off by accident, wasn't sure which one was which. He goes to turn the water back on, okay? Guy comes back downstairs, the neighbor comes back downstairs, and um, he asks for the plumber. And um, I said, is your water not on? He said, no, it's still not on. Got the plumber, plumber goes back to turn the water on. While the plumber is doing that, the neighbor says to me, hey, um, do you smoke? Um, I said, no, I don't smoke. I don't smoke cigarettes or anything like that. He said, do you smoke weed? I said, not really. Um, maybe occasionally. Okay. Um, it's not like it's illegal. It's not illegal here in Jamaica. It's not illegal in the States. You just, just you can't have more than a certain amount on you. If you have more than a certain amount on you, that it, that it becomes illegal. Okay. Um, so he says to me, well, if you ever want to smoke, just come knock on the door. And so I was like, okay, you know, that was a nice gesture, seeing as how um, there had been no communication between him and myself at all. And so I went back into my apartment. I guess at this time he goes up back to his apartment, he changes his clothes, he puts on his evening loungewear, whatever, and he comes back downstairs. He says, hey, I really meant what I said, like I really, really meant what I said. And so I'm looking at him and I'm like, okay, well, I felt like something else was going on with him. So I don't know, maybe he wanted to talk or anything. And me being the person that I am, you know, I'm, I'm too friendly. I've been told many, many times that I'm too friendly. Um, that's getting ready to change. Okay, that's changing. Um, I said, well, do you want to come in or something? And he was like, yeah. So he comes in and um, he was like, oh, he was like, oh, your place is really nice. He was like, you know, it, he said, it's much, much bigger than mine. He said, I have the same cabinet. I think he was just kind of comparing his, comparing his apartment, whatever, which is a one bedroom. He has a one bedroom. I was in a two bedroom and the landlord, I believe, was in a three, three bedroom. And um, he, I was like, yeah, I was like, well, you know, do you want to see? I was like, it's my bedroom, the other room I'm using as the office. And um, he saw my, ooh, I have got to work on this. This is not good. Um, he saw my um, tarot wall in my office. And he was like, oh, he was like, is that a tarot wall? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, I knew it was the reason why I came down here. I just felt like it was the reason why I was supposed to come down here. And so we, we go in the living room and we sit down and my plumber's still there working. And we're talking and we're having, you know, he's talking about spiritual conversation and he's letting me know how in tune he is. Um, he's telling me multiple times, uh, talking, talking a lot about him breaking up with his ex, okay? Um, and he sits down and he has, I think, like maybe like a, a piece of a joint. It might have been this big. He hit it maybe two times or whatever. He, he didn't, he wasn't really smoking it himself, actually. And we were talking, and um, I noticed a little femininity about himself. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know what it is, but it seems like I, since I've been here, it seems like I, um, um, the LGBTQ community seems to be drawn to me for some reason. Um, mostly men. It's going to be, no, ain't no mostly all men, okay? Um, so when I, when I noticed a little femininity about him, well, this is what made me ask. This, this is what made me ask. I had an associate over. Um, one day they were needing to use my computer to um, take care of some business. And the guy from upstairs, he comes downstairs and I kind of noticed that my associate person 
I don't know, kind of looked at him. I, and I guess maybe he looked at him because he maybe thought he knew him or something like that. Or maybe he looked familiar or something like that. Um, but I noticed that he did it twice. But I didn't say anything. So when the guy from upstairs comes down and, and he just, I don't know, I just asked him. I was like, hey, let me ask you a question. I said, are you a part of the LGBT community? And he says, with very proud, you know what I mean? Which is nothing, I, hey, let me tell you something. It ain't nothing wrong out here. I don't, I don't pass judgment on nobody. That's just me. I don't pass judgment on nobody. You know what I'm saying? People live how they life, how they choose to live their life. It ain't none of my business. He says, yes, I'm bisexual. I was like, okay. That was the end of that. And then we started, you know, back to our spiritual conversation. And, you know, he was letting me know how um, his ex, which was a man, um, was a narcissist. And they broke up. And he was just talking a lot about his ex. And um, he also proceeded to tell me that he, his mother, tried to kill him when he was a kid. Okay. So I'm sitting here and I'm listening to all of this stuff and we're conversing back and forth. And my associate friend calls while we're sitting, you know, talking. And I'm like, hey, I was like, yeah, just, I was like, I'm sitting here actually talking to the neighbor upstairs. And so I had my associate on speaker and he was like, oh, he was like, um, that's cool. And so the neighbor sitting right here says, hello. So he speaks, oh, you know, on the speakerphone to my associate friend. Associate friend says, hello, and then asked him some type of a question. I don't know, because then they got kind of got off into the patois, and I really don't understand that a lot. So I don't exactly know what they were saying, but pretty much, pretty much, I don't, I, to be honest with you, I heard, I heard bumble clot, and then there's like a but um anyway that that little whatever conversation they had over the phone that was it so he asked um, I basically had to tell him you know basically well, you know I was like well it was nice talking with you I still have some work I have to do okay and so, um, because I had not done um, any videos that, uh, that day, I don't know what I was doing. I think I was preoccupied with something, but, and then my plumber was there. And I don't like doing my videos when, when other people are there. So, um, I was like, yeah, you know, we'll catch up another time. And so before he left, he asked for my associate friend's number. And I said, well, I don't give out people's numbers without their permission. So... My associate friend calls me, or well, I think I called them, and I was like, hey, I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> Look, I just, I, I just went in, because my, my ring light is connected to my, to my laptop, and it timed out on me. Hold on one second. Sorry about that. I gotta remember to rub my finger across. That's too bright. So anyway, um, I'm like, hey, you know, I had a conversation with the neighbor upstairs and, and they, they um, asked me for your phone number. Well, and they asked me for your phone number and, and asked me to put a good word in for them. So my associate friend didn't object to it so by this time the neighbor upstairs he had went he had went upstairs and he had sent me a snap shot of his instagram and wanted me to send it to my associate because i was like well this person just sent me um a thing of their snapchat wanting me to send it to you the person did not object so i went on ahead and sent it to him because like i said Grown people do what the hell they want to do. I don't that and your your sexuality, what you choose to do, ain't got nothing to do with me. Okay, some people have issues with it. Um, what they call it, homophobic and all of that. 
I, I, I mean, I don't care now. I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna be involved with anybody that's bisexual because that's just not my preference. Okay, but um, anyway, that um, talking to the friend, whatever, a little bit more, and then I said, well, I'm gonna go to bed, you know, because I'm sleepy. So I go to bed. I get up the next day. I'm going about my business, doing what I'm doing. I was actually on a meeting, um, on a meeting call when I got a knock at my door around, I don't even know what time it was. It might've been like around four, five o'clock in the afternoon or something, four o'clock in the afternoon or something like that. And, and um, I opened the door and it's the neighbor from upstairs and I'm, you know, I'm kind of like with the phone on my hand. I'm not about to invite him in because I'm actually busy. But he was like, hey, he was like, give me a hug. And so, you know, I did one of those sideways hugs and he said, I'm on my way to your friend's house. And I was like, oh, okay. And he was like, yeah, he said, I just wanted to say hi. And I was like, okay, well, have fun. I, you know, like I, I didn't know what to say. So I'm like, all right, well, hey, whatever, you know, ain't got nothing to do with me. So the day goes by, it's nighttime again, time to go to sleep that night. And I wake up, I get, I get awakened the next morning, like about five something in the morning, maybe five something in the morning to the neighbor upstairs. He is sending me a gazillion messages through WhatsApp, okay? I looked at my phone. I saw a message from my associate friend saying, um, it, was, it was around 11 something that night saying, hey, we need to talk. And as I'm getting all these other messages from the, from the neighbor upstairs, basically telling me that my associate friend was a Scam, a scammer. Um, he's going to pay for what he did to me. He's going to pay for what he did to him. I don't know, you know, what he did to me. And I, and I, at this point, I don't even know. Sorry, y'all. Oh, you keep flying around me. Playing circles around. I'm about, I'm about to. <laughs> I'm about to blow myself out of here with this daggone bug spray stuff running circles around here. So anyway, I'm getting all these messages. He's a scammer. He's gonna pay for what he did to you. Don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. He said, um, I opened myself up to him and this is what happens. This is why I don't come out or this is why I don't do this because you know, you open up to people. I don't know, okay? All of this stuff I'm, I'm looking. So by this point, I'm, I'm, I'm sending the associate friend that I actually knew first before. I don't I didn't even know this guy upstairs to, to be honest with you. I said, I text, I said, what the hell is going on? So she a friend says, um, <laughs> excuse me, that stuff made me sneeze. I'm gonna try to shorten it, shorten up the story a little bit, okay? This is the conclusion. These two met up. Um, the neighbor upstairs apparently tried to come on to my associate friend. My associate friend was not feeling it. Um, maybe it was too much, too soon. I don't know. But I believe that the guy upstairs felt rejected. My associate friend then also tells the neighbor upstairs that he liked me. Now, I don't know if he actually does like me or if he was just saying that to kind of like bag dude up from upstairs off of him. Whatever the case, I wind up getting caught in the crossfire because apparently the guy upstairs has some serious mental health issues, okay? I don't know if he was off his meds. 
I don't know if he was spiraling because him and his ex broke up. Um, at the end of the day, I'm just pretty sure that he had mental issues, okay? But I didn't realize it until I realized it. <laughs> Look, I didn't realize it until, be, until it became very clear. So I'm getting all these influx of messages. He's like, should I come down? I was thinking about making some tea. I was like, well, no, I'm still halfway asleep. Um, I wasn't feeling good. That was, that was those, during those four days where I don't know what I was going through, but I, probably what it was, it was that dark energy that I was surrounded by between him and the landlord, okay? Both of them evil as fuck, okay? And so, I don't know, something may have hit if they was, I was sick for four days, okay? So the day goes on, he's sending these messages, he's sending screenshots, he's, and I'm just, at this point, I just don't even respond. I don't even respond because I, it, it was it was too much, it was too much of an influx. It was, I had a hair appointment that day, I wasn't feeling good. So after I got my um, hair retightened, which my, my loctician, she would probably have a fit, but after I got my hair retightened, I reach out to my, um, my associate friend that I knew first, and I was like, hey, I was like, um, I said, we need to, like, we maybe need to meet up somewhere and, and have a drink. And he was like, yeah, he said, because I want to, I want to finish talking to you. So we meet up and we have a couple of drinks. And that's when he, he was pretty much telling me kind of like what unfolded while they had their visit. And that was that dude upstairs was trying to come on. And the social friend was not there. That was not there yet, was not feeling it, whatever. Told them to think that he liked me and all hell broke loose. So I did not respond to any of those messages that day. I think another, uh, I think the very next day, my plumber comes back to, to fix the leaks that was in the pipe. Yeah, the plumber comes back to fix the leaks that was in the pipe. And um, before he left, he was showing me outside where to turn the water back on once the pipe is dry. So this is on the side of the building. The side of the building is where, um, where um, if you see my video, you see me hanging my clothes. It was that side of the building. That's where my neighbor and I, we hang our clothes on the line when we wash. And then he has a window that looks down in, down in that area. So the plumber is telling me where to turn the water back on. And he, the neighbor upstairs, he just starts screaming. God is real. I tried to tell you. I tried to tell you about so-and-so. And you didn't want to listen, your bond. And so by that time, I was like, "Don't call out my name," because I'm 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 looking like something is really wrong with this this nigga. Okay, something is really wrong. And so he comes out on the patio, and he was like, "I God is real, and I see you, and this is who I am." And I and I looked up at him, and I said, "What is your problem?" He was like, "This is who I am. I have HIV." And I was like, "Okay." So I go back inside my apartment, right? And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, "What?" just happened okay and i'm thinking to myself okay i don't know why well i mean i hadn't really figured it out i think i did maybe have figured it out when we we, we talked about it me and my friend talked about it that it was it was the rejection it was my friend said, saying that he liked me and the guy upstairs definitely having some mental issues whatever it was it triggered him and sent him spiraling down okay so I go back inside my apartment and I'm sitting there and um, maybe like I, I think I lay back down because I was still sleepy because I had hung out a little bit the night before. And um, by uh, the landlord's boyfriend, spouse, whatever he is, he comes down. He was like, yo, he was like, hey, hey, neighbor. And so I go to the door and I was like, yeah, he said, have you seen the guy upstairs? He said, the mental health people are looking for him. And I was like, well, no, I haven't seen him since earlier, you know what I'm saying, when he was screaming and hollering and damning everybody to hell. And, um, 
And I said, but I'm glad you stopped by. I said, because actually I was going to um, inform you that I thought maybe something may be going on with him. I'm not exactly sure, but I would, I would prefer to reach out to, I was going to prefer to speak to him because I didn't want to speak to her because she was too dismissive for me, okay? And I already wasn't feeling it. So um, I said, I don't really know what's going on. I said, he met up, you know, with, uh, with one of my associate people. They, they, they took up a conversation. They took it upon themselves to meet up. And I don't know what happened. He came back now. He's screaming and hollering, talking about my friend is, is, is scamming and don't trust him and all of this crazy slanderous stuff. And so the um, landlord's boyfriend asked, he said, let me ask you, was, is it a male? I said, yes, it is a male. So clearly they already know that this, per well, this person's sexual preference, um, whatever. They, as in fact, they knew more than what they were, okay? They, they knew more than what they was acting like they knew, okay? They knew he had mental issues. I didn't, okay? So I'm sitting here on the couch and I'm like, okay, with well, the mental health people looking for him and I'm trying to reach out to my um, my associate friend. I'm like, hey, and I said, they just said that the mental health people was looking up, looking for the dude upstairs because between both of us, he was sending us text messages all day long. Okay, just a whole bunch of crazy. I cannot lie. God is not a lie and you're gonna pay. <coughs> Come on, see, talking about my associate friend was gonna pay for what he did to him and to me and I'm like, okay, I don't even know what you're talking about. But I'm not gonna even entertain it because this sounds really weird, okay? So I sit down on the couch and I'm like, well, if the mental health people looking for him that front may not be a bad thing, okay? So then maybe like an hour later, I get a phone call from the landlord. She says, um, hey, she said, I heard something earlier that was disturbing, but, I, but, but, but then I've learned that it's something deeper. And I'm like, well, I mean, the, the guy upstairs, I said, the guy upstairs, I, I, I said, I think he might be, I don't know, something, something is wrong. I said, um, he came down here yesterday, he met up with, with somebody that I know the day after that, and I don't know, things just seem to be going haywire at this point. So she says, well, you're a smart lady. You didn't know he had mental issues? I was like, no, I did not know he had mental issues. How the hell am I supposed to know he had mental issues? Clearly you did. You knew he had mental issues because you sure didn't tell me. And so um, basically she kicked me out. She told me that I had to leave. She told me that I violated, it's not working. She said I violated the contract. I said, how did I violate the contract? Violate what contract? She said, you were um, smoking, you're not supposed to be smoking. I said, first of all, I was not smoking. I said, you ain't never seen me smoke. She was like, well, I smell smoke. I don't know if it's coming from you or coming from him. I'm like, if you smelling smoke, you live right next door to him. It's gotta be coming from him. I didn't violate no contract, but that's not what it was. She, she was, our, the energy the dynamic between her and, her and I had changed, okay, period. And, um, but I told her, I was like, you know what? I said, that's fine. I said, that's fine. I said, I was already looking anyway. And actually, I was already looking because I didn't. I, I decided I didn't like her. Okay, and I was I was needing to move anyway, so it was not a big deal. Basically, what it did is it just pushed me to do what I had to do. So that night goes by. That's that's the end, end of that conversation. We agreed to that. You know that we were going to do that. She says, just continue to do what you do on time and blah blah blah. Okay, whatever. Mean to pay my rent on time. That day goes by, the night goes by. It's now Sunday, six o'clock in the morning. The guy upstairs starts at it again. God is real, I cannot lie. I, that's really all I kept, because he just, uh, he was just yelling and screaming. And then the next thing you know, he starts throwing all of his furniture, which I don't think it's his furniture, I think it's her furniture. I think her, his apartment was furnished. I remember him telling me that his apartment was, fur was furnished. He also expressed how much he did not like her, okay? Um, but um, he starts throwing crystal lamps, 
out the window. He's busting out screens, throwing all his clothes, like just chucking stuff out the window. Woke me up out of my sleep, okay? And so I look out the window and you then you got her and her spouse. I don't you know, I don't know what he is. Her and her spouse. Um they're coming down, you know what I'm saying, and, and he's still throwing stuff and she's she's opening the gate because I guess at this point he's throwing stuff over the gate into the street. She has a garbage bag in her hand. She's trying to put whatever he's throwing out in the garbage bag. She comes up to the window and she points up at him and she says, I am sick of your shit. She said, if you don't stop throwing stuff, I'm gonna stop throwing stuff at you. I'm gonna start throwing stuff at you. She says, you need to she says, you need to go inside, you need to clean up, and you need to sit down. Excuse me? He need to do what? He need to go in there and clean up and sit down. Sit down? So, you mean to tell me that this person who is just a tenant to you can tear your shit up and you ain't gonna call the police? You gonna tell them to go sit down? That is your family member. I didn't figure it out, okay? Because you don't treat people like that who you're not related to. All right, so I'm sitting here and I'm thinking to myself, okay, so ain't nobody gonna call the police. So I, I sent her a text message. I'm like, hey, I'm like, when I move, how soon can I expect my deposit back? Because according to my lease, she owes me my deposit. And I got a feeling she gonna take, she's gonna make me, she's gonna make me go there with her with that deposit because she's evil, okay? Uh, and I will just, just in case you're watching it, I will escalate this if you don't give me back my money, okay? But um, anyway, okay, she, um, I said, I said I don't feel safe here, and she texts me back and she basically tells me it's your fault that you don't feel safe here. And I'm like, how the hell is it my fault that I don't feel safe here? How, no, what you did not disclose to me is that the person above me was a psychotic, okay? But I'm also finding out, so was she, all right? So, this, these text messages go back and forth. And then, um, I think I, I, called, I called somebody. I was like, hey, I said, I need you to come over here. Um, I don't know if I called somebody before. Yeah, I said, I need you to come over here. So by this time, she comes down to my apartment, to my window, and she's calling out my name. And so I go, and I was like, look, I said, I'm not going to have no conversation with you if you finna start, if you're going to be blaming me, okay, for stuff I don't have nothing to do with. She proceeded to call me a Yankee girl. She accused me of giving the neighbor upstairs drugs, she um, accused, she said that I was running from something from the states. Um, she went into how I'm supposed to. I'm, I have to write a letter about somebody every month to keep somebody in prison. I don't know what the hell this nutcase is talking about. All, at this point, all I all I've come to the conclusion is I am surrounded by crazy people. Okay. So. I'm like, okay, I call up my, my, my um, somebody, I was like, you need to, I was like, I need you to come over here. Because actually, um, I had talked to my realtor, and I was going to look at a place that day. They come over to pick me up to go look at the place. As we exit the apartment, um, the guy upstairs, family, no, before that, the police came over. The police came over and um, knocked on the door. And I opened the door, and they were like, you know, hello. Um, basically, I don't. I mean, I don't. Basically, they were just at letting me know that um, the person upstairs is issue going on with the person upstairs. Um, the person upstairs said that you ruined his life. I said, well, I don't know how I did that. I don't know how I ruined his life. The police officer says, I don't know either. He was like, um, he said, I mean, clearly. You know, he does this, and he said, and the people, his family is, is supposed to be coming to pick him up to take him to the, emo, the emotional health hospital or whatever. Asked me for my ID, you know, how long I was going to be there, the, you know, the regular stuff. 
Um, so if you, you know, if you feel, if you, if you need assistance, you can dial the 119. Here's the number directly to the, the nearest um, police station. So I'm like, okay. So the person comes over to take me to go see the go see go see the place. And so as we're exiting, because um, the person has a, a a motorcycle, and they do food deliveries. So he had his food delivery bag. So I had to wear the food delivery bag on my back so that I can fit on the on the bike. So I got this food delivery bag on my back. And this nutty landlord, she's standing upstairs and she says, that's probably where she's hiding the drugs. <laughs> she says probably where she's hiding the drugs. And I'm thinking to myself, I said, this, these people are crazy. No, seriously, like these people are crazy. I'm like, this is not even my bag. Okay, this is his bag to carry his food in, dummy. Like, are you serious? And so his family member that came, I guess, to see about him, he asked me, could he speak to me? And I was like, sure. oh my God, y'all, he was fine. He was fine AF too. And I'm like, damn, I hate that you connected to a bunch of crazy people. But anyway, he asked me what happened. I was like, look, I don't know what happened. I was like, I just know he came down one night. We had a little spiritual conversation. He took up a conversation with somebody that called me on the phone because apparently they already follow each other on Snapchat or whatever. They met up and I don't know what happened after that. Besides the fact that everybody now, as I, said, I, I said no offense, sir. Besides the fact that now I'm just discovering that I'm surrounded by crazy people. Okay. So she comes down and then she starts trying to turn my uh my my um person the person that came to pick me up she starts trying to turn him against me by saying um well she start first of all she start hur hurling insult calling me bitches okay now i don't know about y'all but you know what i'm saying where i come from too many, too many bitches, those is fighting words, okay? She's someone so get this bitch out of here, yeah, get this bitch out of here, and, and you ought to see what, um, you ought to see what she said about Jamaican people. She said Jamaican people are leeches, so apparently she's stalking my, my YouTube channels, okay? Um, and she, she tries to show him a video, or whatever. The people that I know, they watch all of my videos. I ain't, Ain't saying nothing about nobody being no no leeches, whatever. The lady just, I was like, I said, I said, do you, I said, do you, I said, you make this stuff up off your top of your head like real fast, like real fast. And so, um, I'm trying to conversate with the guy. He's asking for the person, you know, information or phone number that who he last saw. You know, asking do asking did the dude upstairs do any drugs? I said I don't know what he did. I said when he was at my apartment, he had a little piece of a joint that he that he didn't, he barely even smoked. Um, and so the lady kept, uh, the landlord kept um, um, calling me bitches. And so finally, y'all, I, I, I couldn't take it no more. I said, you got one more time to call me a bitch, okay? I'm not gonna be too many more of your bitches. Long story short, this lady tried to charge me. She tried to charge me, y'all. And before I knew it, I had tossed the bag off my back and everything in my hand went flying, including my phone. I don't know if y'all can see this. My phone is meshed up. I can barely even see what's going on with the phone. I didn't even realize that I did it until the person that, was, that came to pick me up handed it to me. And I was like, whose phone is this? And I looked at it and I said, damn, that's my phone. God damn it, that's my phone. Um, because... All I know is, if she was charging me, I was getting ready to wear your ass out, okay? But, thank goodness that didn't happen, because um, I'm in another country, all right? And a lot of things are being kind of slow down here. So I might have been in, I might have been in the Jamaican pen for a minute. Ain't nobody got time for that. But um, anyway, they broke it up and all that type of stuff. So it, it got really bad, okay? Um, 
I went to go see a place, didn't like it, um, but I decided that it would be best for me not to sleep in my apartment that night because um, if she tried to come for me again, it was gonna be it was gonna be an issue. Okay, I mean like I don't care where I am, I'm gonna defend myself. Period. All right. So I stay by a friend, um, and just so happens that um, a place opened up for me just like that. Just like that. When I tell you that God, the universe is on my side, when I tell you that no weapon formed against me will prosper, I don't care what you try to do, I don't care what you say, it ain't going to work. Okay? Why? Because, because I know in my heart I'm a good person. All right? I know in my heart I'm a good person and I know I only, do, I only put out good to people. So let me tell you something. Whatever you try to throw my way, it's going it's coming back at you. I'm I'm finna speak it. It's coming back at you 30-fold. 30 30-fold. 30 so I suggest you don't. Just don't. Just don't. Okay? So um anyway, that is the reason why I wound up moving. But everything fell into place. A place opened up. Um actually um it's 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 nice. It's not as it's it's not as nice as the other place. I, I'm not going to lie. I loved that other apartment. It was so me. It was me. It was perfect for me. But this place is just as nice. Um, I have a beautiful view. It's cheaper. And it has hot water. Come on, somebody. So, that, people is what I've had to put up with, um, I think maybe for like the last week. That is the current update, but right now, besides the fact that I got my internet service turned on today, and I go to the store and I come back and the internet service is not on, so I don't know, but other than that, I've got my boxes, okay, back from customs. They was determined to get some money out of me, and they got it, okay, because I needed my stuff. And um, so I'm at this point now, we're just in a short period of time. I've experienced some troubled waters. I have encountered some crazy people. But all is well. You know, that is past. And now I feel like I should be able to peacefully be on the island. Okay. Um, but y'all just make sure that you keep your girl in your prayers. You know what I mean? I'm not scared. I'm not, I'm not scared of, of anybody or anything, okay? Because I know that I have not done anything wrong, okay? And so, um, but that is the update, all right? My landlord kicked me out in Jamaica. Craziness. So anyway, y'all, there you have it. All right, so um, I will be continuing to upload videos as I um, explore more of Jamaica. Um, I will be doing a lot of back and forth. So, um, yeah. That's what's happening. So, I ain't got nothing else. I'm actually getting ready to go to sleep because I'm tired. So, yeah. Um, Very interesting, isn't it? Very, very interesting. All right, y'all. I'm going to bed. Peace.